Hey, Tommy from The Run Testers with another first run review. In this video, I'm going to be taking a first look at the Hoka Solomar running shoe. Let's dive in. The Hoka Solomar costs £105 or $125, weighs in at 231 grams or 8.1 ounces for men in a size 8, and the drop is 6 millimeters. The Hoka Solomar is a daily running shoe with a focus on simplicity. Hoka states that it's a shoe designed for gym, running and walking, with a lean build and a traditional style midsole. It features a recycled mesh upper, a CMEVA midsole foam and a late stage meta rocker. There's also an extended heel pull, a moulded EVA sock liner and a modest covering of outsole rubber for grip and added durability. So the fit for me in the Solomar is true to size, definitely wouldn't size up or down in the shoe. It's a Hoka, so it's quite narrow, but I would probably say this Solomar is actually a little bit more narrow than many of the other Hokas I've tried recently. So worth taking that into account if you're looking at buying this shoe, but I definitely go true to size if you can. So I've been out to do a 14K tempo run in the Solomar, and that was a bit of a mistake. Um, I don't normally use shoes like this for um, tempo runs. I like to have like quite a bit of cushioning in my shoes. I'm used to using cushioned shoes for my marathon training. And the Solomar isn't a very cushioned shoe. It has cushioning in it. It's just very firm. It doesn't feel very soft. It doesn't feel very cushioned. And you don't really get a lot from that CM EVA midsole foam. It's a very traditional, old style midsole foam. There's not a lot of propulsion in it there's not a lot of energy return in it it's just quite dull um but also uh, quite firm so if you're if you're the kind of runner that likes traditional style firm shoe it might be okay for you but it doesn't have any of the um performance feels of some uh, of, of many of the running shoes out at the moment that that foam just doesn't really do a lot for me now over that 14k, uh, I was maintaining a pace at around 4 minute 25 kilometers, which is around my um, tempo training pace, my marathon pace that I'm currently working towards is 4.15. I didn't set out to do that actually, I set out to go a, li a little bit slower and I did find this shoe was actually pretty conducive to running fast. I was looking at my watch thinking that's, that's quite good, I wasn't thinking that I was running at that pace uh, consistently for that run. So I think it does feel like a lighter shoe. It does feel like um, you can pick up the pace a little bit more in it. That firmer midsole does make it pretty good for running at a faster pace, um, but that's it really. And I'd also say that, that over that 14K, by the end of it, my legs didn't feel great. I definitely wanted more cushioning or more softer cushioning in my in the shoe for that run. By the end of it, I, I, I wasn't enjoying that run. I'd definitely say this is a shoe that probably tops out at maybe 5K, would definitely not go over 10K in this shoe. Hoka talk about it as being a gym shoe that you can use for running and you can use for walking, which basically means it's a very general shoe and really skews towards that gym side of things where, and you can do a little bit of running in it as well. I think it's fine as a gym shoe. It, that, that, that firmer midsole foam is very grounded. It feels very stable, um, very good for doing weights in the gym because you're stuck to the ground and there's no sort of wobbliness or cushioning which you don't need when you're, you're doing weights in the gym um, and you could probably then jump on the treadmill with it and do three to five k on it and be and be fine it's it's not an issue with that but I definitely wouldn't go longer in it because um, it just doesn't have any sort of benefits for protecting your legs helping with energy return anything like that um, the only time that I probably would use this is if I was going out for a short, faster run and I didn't want to use one of my carbon plate race shoes or one of my more performance-based shoes. I wanted something that was a little bit cheaper um, and uh, just lighter, really. But other than that, I think it's generally just a gym shoe that can do a bit of running in it as well. So if you're a runner and you're looking for this as a running shoe, I think there's far better options, even from Hoka, um, for running shoes that coming at around the same price, but just have better benefits. There is a late stage metal rocker in it. I didn't really notice it, but I did feel that there was a nice turnover in this shoe. The consistent pace that I had over that 14K tempo run was pretty good. I was actually quite pleased with the effort that I put into that run and what I got out of it. It felt quite good over it. Definitely didn't feel like it was slowing down, didn't feel um, sloppy or slow. It, def it was a nice fluid movement that I had. 
Um, and by the end of it, I maintained that pace for the whole time. My legs still did feel a little bit tired afterwards though. Um, so I don't think it's good for going up to that distance. Definitely cap out around 5K, I think, in this shoe. I did also find that the upper was pretty good. Um, it does have a fair bit of padding and it's not a massively plus shoe, but there's more padding than I would expect from a shoe at this level. It's a pretty lean shoe. Um, and it was very comfortable for that run. I had no issues on the first run, no rubbing or anything like that. And I didn't really notice it. So that's always a plus point um, for, for me on a run, especially when I've got a lighter shoe that I'm trying to run faster in. The outsole, um, or the midsole first, uh, I, I mentioned it's a pretty dull midsole. There's not a lot you get from it. Uh, it's a fairly old style uh, midsole foam, so nothing that exciting in, in, in that. Um, and yeah, I definitely, there's a, there's a lot better midsoles out there at the moment um, in shoes that cost about the same as this shoe. So not a lot to say about the midsole really. The outsole does have a bit of rubber on it. Um, it's really for grip. There's not a lot of rubber on that midsole foam it's a, um, a lot there's a lot of exposed midsole so I don't expect this is going to help out with durability a great deal it's really just for grip but what I did find is that that rubber on it does have very good grip as long as you land in those the sections that have got the rubber on the grip's pretty good I was running on on wet roads a um, bit of incline and decline it felt very good no issues at all with the grip <laughs> So my verdict on the Hoka Solomar is that it is really just a gym to running shoe. If you're a runner looking for a cheap, lightweight-ish running shoe uh, that you can use for all your, your runs, I wouldn't go for this. If you're a gym goer who might do a little bit of running on a treadmill, might go outside and do 3K, 5K, I think it's fine for that. Ultimately, I think the shoe is designed for people that want um, a Hoka shoe, but don't want that sort of big clumpy design that a lot of Hoka shoes have. Um, other than that, it, if you don't want, if you don't necessarily want a Hoka shoe, I think there's better options out there. Um, the uh, Under Armour Velocity Wind, I think is a superior version of this shoe. It's a little bit more expensive, but not a lot. Um, but that shoe has a similar level of cushioning in it. I mean, this, this doesn't have, this isn't like a minimal shoe. It's not like a barefoot shoe, um, but it does feel like it. It does feel like there's not, there's not a lot of cushioning in there. Uh, the Under Armour Velocity Wind is a similar feel, but that cushioning is better. You can do longer distances in it. You could probably go all the way up half marathon, maybe even marathon if you wanted something a little bit more minimal, a little bit less cushioned. Um, it's just a better all-round shoe. The, the foam is a lot nicer. Um, it's a bit more comfortable and it's just a bit more versatile. Um, and it's and it's not a gym to running shoe. It is a running shoe. Um, so if you're a runner and you're looking for something like the Solomar, I'd probably go for the Velocity Wind too. If you wanted to go for a Hoka and you wanted a shoe that was relatively cheap um, and just had better benefits for running, I would go for the Hoka Rincon 3. That shoe, it's not widely different in terms of the stack height, um, but it, the cushioning in that just feels a bit softer, just feels like it's protecting your legs. There's a little bit more energy return in it. Um, and it's equally lightweight, a lightweight shoe. Um, and I, I, I raced in the Hocker Rincon one a few times. Really enjoyed that shoe, especially considering the low price of it. So I, if you're a runner and you you specifically want a Hoka shoe, um, I would go for the Rincon three over this. I think this is really if if you like the look of this shoe, uh, and you go to the gym and you do a little bit of running, then okay, that's fine. You you that, it will do the job. If you want a shoe to take you. Um, around the streets maybe you're doing you know 5k 10k half marathon there are better shoes out for that um and the solar mar just doesn't really match up to the other options out there at the moment so that's it from me thanks a lot for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon and check the channel out for all the other videos we've got from latest road and trail shoes as well as running headphones and watches out at the moment and don't forget you can also listen to the monthly podcast if you go into the caption below you can find a link to that and listen from the podcast provider of your choice thanks a lot for watching see you next time <laughs>